Hey, let's thank the band one more time. The The band has been all rehearsed with no place to go for far too long, but uh, now they, uh, we get to unleash them here in chapel. It is so good to see you. It is so good to see you. Hey, uh, we have some special guests here with us uh, this morning. We have uh, visitors from Wycliffe Bible Translators. I'm going to ask our guests to please stand. Let's welcome them. This uh, team of translators from Wycliffe are here working on a project called Translator's Notes. They've worked all over the world, so sleeping in Drew Hall is not a big deal to them, right? It's not a hardship. They'll be hosting a time of stories and dessert tonight at 7 o'clock in Emory 102. So if you're interested in missions and um, Bible translators, that's tonight at 7 o'clock in Emory 102. And if you'd like to uh, learn more, uh, about their work now or lives as missionaries as, and uh, Bible translators, please feel free to stop by. So it's great to have you folks with us. Uh, thanks for joining us. Hey, you know what I want you to do? We've we got to limber up because we haven't been here a long time. Sophomores, welcome to the chapel because I realized last year you maybe were never here. All right? But uh, Freshmen were here for orientation. Juniors have distant memories of here, and seniors, who are the only group on campus that remember what a normal year was where we did everything. Uh, it's good to have everybody here. Hey, I want you to turn to your left, to your right, and say hi to your neighbor. All right, now, now, this is, it. This is bigger. I want you to turn to your left and right and give them a fist bump. You know what? If you came to chapel last year, you couldn't do that because you couldn't reach your neighbor. They were too far away. Now, we've all, uh, we've all missed you. I hope you've had a great summer. I've talked to some folks, and uh, we're, we really believe this is going to be a great year. This is going to be a great year. You know, don't let these things hinder your year. The God who moves mountains and raises people from the dead is capable of working through cloth and fabric. All right, so let's just do that. Let's just love on each other and, uh, and be about this. You know, uh, we have, uh, it's been fun. You know, my office up there, I, I like see everything from up there. Right? I mean, I, I've got the best office on campus. And uh, Dr. Hammond, you can't have it. But it, I mean, it's the best office on campus, right? But it's, um, I see folks, and it's been so fun just watching people hug and like, oh, it's so good to see you. It's like a celebration, right? It feels like there's air back in the, in the world and back in the balloon. You know, during the course of the summer, I've talked with folks who have traveled and done things. You know, this year, I took time this summer to meet and hang out with some important people. So I, I want you to introduce these important people in my life to you. All right, first is Sloan. Yes. Yes. My sweet granddaughter Sloan was born in early July, and her grandpa got to go hang out with her when she got home from the hospital, and life was very good. While I was there, I hung out with her big sister, Wednesday, who is very, I got really, they're cute, I'm just telling you. Uh, so I, I got to, they live in Baltimore, so I don't see them all the time. And so it was so, oh, thank you for Baltimore. Yeah, it, it was so good to just be with them. But I also have my second oldest son and his family are in Santa Barbara, California. So I, this is my granddaughter, Louisa. All right, Louisa, Louisa is 15 months old. And up until two weeks ago, I had spent three days with her when she was an infant. We got to the airport. This is what happened at the airport. I, I picked him up. I was so excited. It's like, oh, here's my son. There's my daughter-in-law. Nice to see you. Where's Louisa? And my, my daughter-in-law holds her up and goes, Louisa, look, it's Grandpa from the phone. <laughs> so, yeah, that's my life. But I got to hang out with her, so the two of us hung out at my house. We had a great time. 
But then I got I to gotta show you, this, this, is the, uh, this is senior, yeah, if you're talking about seniority, Goldie. There's Golds. Goldie is, uh, lives in Lowell, so I get to see Goldie from time to time. And Goldie's mom is the amazing Liz Whittet, who uh, works over in Global Ed. So I, I got to see Golds. And then there's my three, uh, my three grandsons, Van. Van is eight. And then there's Wade. Here's Wade. This man is president of my fan club. He, is pre he calls my wife's phone. <laughs> she goes, hi, Wade. He goes, where's Grandpa? So, and then this is, uh, this is Luke. You know, so it was just a great time to be together. I, I hope all of you enjoyed those times. Right, but we also were reminded from time to time during the course of the summer as we crawled out of our basements and started heading around and visiting people that there are other aspects of life that had gone on that maybe weren't happy. Right, my, my folks died um, just prior to the pandemic. My dad passed away of cancer and my mom di died with um, dementia. And so they were cremated. My sisters took care of that. And I, w I went down to New Jersey because I wanted to see, like, I want to find where they were buried. I'd never been there before. And it was like, okay. I know, I mean, they're not in that box. They're doing fine with Jesus. But, you know, it was life. Lots of life have happened in the course of the, uh, of the last year. So um, there's so much that has been put aside, but now we're able to bring it back together. And let's be thankful that we get to rebuild relationships. All right, let, let's... Let's get over petty and get into what's important. And that's the people who we have the privilege of walking through life with. This semester, this semester we're going to uh, look at Proverbs, lessons for life. How many of you have ever read through Proverbs? I'm impressed. I'm impressed. We're going to go for everybody here before I get done this morning. Right? But uh, what... Proverbs talks about, a lot about wisdom. Wisdom. What's the difference between knowledge and wisdom? How many of you have already had a class today? All right, nobody got hurt, that's good. How many of you are still on summer break until like maybe right after chapel? Okay, yep. Yeah. So knowledge awaits you. Knowledge awaits you. But God wants us to be filled with knowledge, but he wants us to be wise in what we do with it. So what's the definition of knowledge? I looked it up. Knowledge is facts, information, and skills required by a person or acquired by a person through experience or education. When you sit in a class, you gain lots of information about facts, and that's what you're worried about because you know on the exam, they want to know what facts you remember because certain facts are important in your fields. So knowledge is facts, information, skills acquired by a person through experience or education. Wisdom is the soundness of an action or decision with regard to the application of experience, knowledge, and good judgment. So really what we see here is knowledge is being all dressed up, but wisdom is giving knowledge someplace to go. For over 30 years, I've been on the fire department in my town. Right? That was last spring. I live in Ryde, New Hampshire. It's a small town, and it's a small town where you just got to, everyone, let's just do this. All right? You got to do what you got to do. And so, you know, as a pastor, I felt like I was spending my life telling people, why don't you go be a witness at your job, be a witness in the non-Christian world, be a witness, right? and then... That's a pastor. Like, you look around, like, okay, what am I going to do? So I thought, well, you know what? There's not a much more pagan place in many towns than the fire station, so I'm going to go over there. And uh, I love being on the fire department. I got good, some great friends. You know, I'm the chaplain. I'm a, fire, I'm a certified firefighter in the state of New Hampshire. And uh, we don't have a whole lot of fires, but this was one. Cost a lady or her life. And, uh, but... Being on the fire department, you take all kinds of classes. You go through all kinds of education and seminars and this and that. And this is what happens when electricity touches this. And this is what happens when a building has 
too much carbon dioxide built up in it, and it's got, you know, and if you add, add oxygen to it, the building is going to burst with flames. I mean, you got all this stuff that you know, and so we're all knowledged up. We're all knowledged up. But when you walk up to a scene of any type, whether it's a motor vehicle accident or it's a house with fire coming out the windows, the first thing you do is you look at it, you process all the knowledge you have, and then you decide it's time to be wise. It's time to be wise. If I'm going into a burning building, you always go in with two people. If I'm going into a burning building, I'm going in with my partner, and you know what? I am coming out with my partner. And we're going to figure out what's wise and what's, you know, how do you approach everything. So our lives call for us to be wise. How many of you have said something and then, look, you know, just, a, oh, I wish I could have reeled that back in. That was not smart. We always say it was not smart. No, it was not wise. It was not wise. Decisions that you've made, not wise. How many of you have your parents ever tell you, wise up? My dad, Bob, wise up. Wise up. And he usually left it to me to figure out where the, where the hole in the wisdom was. But wise up. All right. Proverbs is a book filled with wisdom about healthy living living by God's standards. It really is like God said, you know, let's sit down together and let me sort of give you a little, some wisdom on life. Who's spoken into your life over the years? Any of you have wise grandparents? Right? You just listen and go like, hmm. What gives them wisdom? What gives them wisdom? The spirit? And maybe longevity, having seen things, right, having experienced things, and they might look at you and say, I love your enthusiasm, but just tone it down a little bit. Let's be wise, right? If you're building something, I, I, I like to build and do home repairs, and lumber's not free, so I have learned, listening to my dad early on, and now I have passed on to my sons, when you're doing something with expensive lumber, you measure it three times and you cut it once. That's wise. That's wise. Proverbs is like God saying, hey, you know, let's sit down and just talk about some wise stuff. Let me, let me just give you some clues. And so that's what we're going to do in the course of this semester. This morning, little uh, intro here from Proverbs chapter 1. Proverbs chapter 1. The, the Proverbs of Solomon, son of David, king of Israel. All right, so this is Solomon is David's son. And he's got some writing to do. For gaining wisdom and instruction, for understanding words of insight. This is what Proverbs are. For gaining wisdom and instruction, for understanding words of insight, for receiving instruction in the prudent behavior, and what is right and just and fair. What is right, just, and fair. Isn't it interesting? Those are three of the things that our culture is screaming for. What is right, what is just, and what is fair. And Solomon's saying, it's in this book. It's in this book. Let's wise up. For giving prudence to those who are simple, knowledge and discretion to the young. Let the wise listen and add to their learning. Let the discerning get guidance for understanding proverbs and parables and sayings and riddles of the wise. For the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Proverbs is a vault filled with wisdom and guidance. Now, they're generalizations. They're generalizations, and they're universally valid. Right? These are life lessons, not theological truths. These are life lessons. Hey, here you go. What do you think? This is how you might be able to approach that. So life lessons, and they're not necessarily promises that God's making to anybody. It's more like God just saying, hey, listen up. When you're in this situation, this is a good idea. When you're in this situation, this is a good idea. 
right? We, we learn sometimes through life, usually through life, right? But we learn sometimes through others and the wisdom that they share with us. All right? I'll give you a little hint. How many of you have cars? All right, keep your hands up. All right, everybody bow your heads, close your eyes. Those with your hands up, if you have been ticketed by the one in police on Grapevine Road, please leave your hand up. Uh, yes, I see your hands. Thank you. <laughs> okay, you can open your eyes. The one in police, if you, I'm going to give you, I'm going to share some wisdom. I have not been stopped by them. Only ticket in my life, Bev Farms, Grapevine Road, when I was a student. 31 and the 25, right in front of the Baptist Church. But going this way, the one in police, they have the, these slick cars, right? And it, it, you don't even see that they're police cars, and they're just, they, when it says 30, go 30. Go 30, right? And I, I just shared that little bit of wisdom with you. This is what I've observed. This is what I've observed. Some of you may have to learn that for yourself, but you heard it first here. You know, Proverbs is sort of a sample plate of, of guidance from God. Here, I, I'm just going to give you a read about um, six or seven of these. And, and these are just warm ups for some of the things that we're going to look at during the course of the semester. Proverbs 26, 28, a lying tongue hates its victims, and a flattering mouth works ruin. Ooh, right? Some of them stick a little bit. Talks a lot about the tongue. Proverbs eleven thirteen, a gossip betrays a confidence, but a trustworthy person keeps a secret. Simple, but profound, right? Proverbs 13, 20. If you want to grow in wisdom, then spend time with the wise. Walk with the wicked and you'll eventually become just like them. Proverbs 13, 3. Guard your words and you'll guard your life. But if you don't control your tongue, it will ruin everything. Proverbs 21, 23. Those who guard their mouths and their tongues guard themselves from trouble. Proverbs 4, 26 to 27. Be careful, uh, give careful thought to the paths for your feet and be steadfast in all your ways. Do not turn to the right or to the left. Keep your foot from evil. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. This is a pretty famous one. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will Make straight your paths. Then one last sample. Proverbs 4.23. Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. Everything you do flows from your heart, so guard your heart. Guard your heart. You know, God is, is given some advice, and as we work our way through, um, <coughs> excuse me, a number of the, the Proverbs this semester, uh, you're going to hear what God's put in the heart of lots of speakers. We have some great preachers coming in uh, this, uh, this semester, right? And uh, we're, we want to look forward to being, we want to look forward to being back together. And you know, I really believe that when we enter in this room, where we're all here, and when we were just singing, this is the heartbeat of this college. This is the heartbeat of this college. And the quicker we all remember that and lean into that, the better the year is going to be. What just happened here this morning when all of you stood and sang, and there's probably 1,400 people here, this was the largest group of people in any of the New England states to ever stand up this week at one time and sing praise to Jesus. The, only, the biggest one. You know, there are lots of folks here from small churches. There are lots of he folks here from small churches who this morning when they came in here and saw all of you, they just thought, this is the biggest group of Christians I've ever been in a room with. So let's not take that for granted. You know, this past uh, few months, we've revisited friends and relatives. Now it's time to revisit the, our common call. Our common call as that drives us as individuals, God's call on our lives, but bigger than that, God's corporate call on this place and us together. 
It is not an accident that Gordon College is at 255 Grapevine Road. It is not an accident that 1,400, 1,500, 1,600 people, throw the faculty and staff in, are all here figuring out what it means to walk with Jesus. It is not an accident. Gordon is uniquely positioned in New England to make a difference for the gospel of Jesus Christ. I absolutely believe that. God is doing the work in our region, and many of the people who are doing that work sat in the same pew you're sitting in right now. They've left here and they've been about God's business. But you know, we have the opportunity as well to be about God's business while we're here. It's not like you're like, oh, I just got here the other day. God, I'm ready for you in four years. I'll be ready. There's needs everywhere. There's needs among us. Let us care for each other well. Imagine if admissions could say, hey, you know what? You come here. And there's going to be more people caring for you than you know. Let's be involved. Let's model what it means to love one another. Let's have people, when they drive by, say, there's something special about what goes on there. Let's have athletic teams, when they come in here to play, say, I don't know what it is about them. That is an amazing place. The way they treated us all the way through. We have a chance to live out what it is that God has put in our hearts. How many of you are on athletic teams this, this fall? How many of you have been on athletic teams growing up? How many of you did like wreck anything? All right, Goldie played softball this year. Goldie played softball this year. She's very excited. I got a video, I, a video that my son Ethan sent me of her hitting the ball and, and getting to first base, and I'm not sure that he may have been more excited than she was. Like, Goldie, Goldie! <laughs> the, the camera's shaking with excitement. How many of you have a box of participation trophies at home? Those little ones they give you. It's like, hey, you know what? You never got in the game. Your team never won. Your team never had a prayer, but here's a trophy. You're a winner. Right? We've given those out all the time. My man, Wade. Wade called me up. My son sent me this, this picture. His first t-ball uniform. Wade's got an older brother. And some of you will relate, with, relate to this. Wade has an older brother that he has spent days, if not weeks, of his life sitting on the sidelines watching play. Let's go to Van's game. Oh, Van's playing soccer. Let's all go. Van's playing basketball. Let's all go. Van's playing flag football. Let's all go. Right? And Wade went from place to place to place to place. He sent me this, and I called him up. I said, Wade, what a great uniform. And this is what he cut me off when I, I couldn't get the, the F or the R and the N out on uniform. And this is what he said. He says, Grandpa, I'm going to touch the bases. I'm going to touch the bases. I'm going to touch the bases. And you know what he meant? I'm getting in the game. I get to touch the bases. I'm done watching. I'm in the game. I went to T-ball. If you haven't seen T-ball, T-ball is like, it's so much action. So I'm there. Wade hits the ball. It goes from like halfway from me to Nick and, and Teddy, right? Takes off. He didn't care what, uh, he ran a third the first time. All he knows, I'm going to the bases. It's like the kids hit the ball and they just take off, but I'm going to the bases. He hit one, it rolled from me to Bill. And T-ball, you get a home run, just with the commotion. Like, the ball's going all over the place. And when he came in and scored, he felt like, I got a run. I got a run. You know, he was in just infectious with excitement about being in the game. 
He was tired of watching his older brother. And I want to encourage us. You know what we need to do starting right now, moving forward? Let's get in the game of the gospel that Jesus has called us to. There are a lot of us that spend a lot of time watching other people do it. Boy, look at the difference they're making. Oh, man, I wish I could do that. I wish I could do this. Let's not be theorists of caring. Let's care for each other. Let's dedicate ourselves to getting off the bench and in the game and care for one another and the world around us. Let's grow in wisdom and in action. Let's not be hindered by these. The gospel is too important for cloth or paper to be a barrier. Let's commit to being difference makers. You know, I, I hope that all of us, as we approach this semester, have the attitude, put me in, coach. Put me in. Those of you on sports teams, benches are, are, are an important part of the game, right? You need some subs to go in and, or specialists to go into games. But you talk to any athlete where they really want to be, in the game. In the game. I'll be a good teammate. I'll be over here. I'll be ready. I'll, I'll bide my time. But every time there's a substitution, they look to the coach. It's like, coach, me. And the coach goes, you. Yes. Then you got to go in and act like cool. Right? But put me in, coach. Put me in. Tomorrow uh, afternoon at 5 o'clock, there's going to be about 40 to 45 churches set up around the bell at tables for our church connection. I'd encourage you to find one and plug in. Underclassmen, if you're not sure where to go, ask somebody on your floor who's been here. Where can I go and plug in? There are churches coming that represent all the different, <laughs> every different worship style going on. If you get really hung up, you know, come talk to me, talk to Kristen, uh, talk to Bill. I mean, we could try to give you some direction as to where to find a church. Find a place and plug in. Plug in. Do not just lay in your bed because your mom's not here to rattle you. Get up and be involved. You know, it's our chance to be difference makers. You have no idea the words that you might share in a church with somebody or the words that, of encouragement that you might share with somebody might be game changers for that person in that moment or in their lives. Do not doubt what God can do for, uh, for you and through you. I also want to give you the Proverb Challenge. Proverbs is an amazing book. It's easy reading. It's easy reading. And uh, there happen to be 31 chapters. And I was looking at a calendar once. And I noticed that lots of months have 31, 31 days. So this is my challenge for us as a campus, students, faculty, staff, that each day we look at your phone, look at your watch, wherever you figure out what date it is. Today is the 25th. By the end of the day, read chapter 25 of Proverbs. Tomorrow, do 26. And if we do that over the course of the semester, we'll gain some wisdom. We'll unpack it more here, but we'll get to live it out there. We'll get to live it out there and be great representatives of what it is that God would have for us as individuals and as a college. So be wise. Let's get wise. Let's get wise, but let's live our lives for Christ. And let the light that is here be something that changes this region. God has things in store for us. Let's not miss them. Let's not miss them. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for this opportunity to uh, start our semester. Lord, for being in this room together, we are grateful. Uh, Lord, I pray that you would um, be with us as we go. Lord, may we take the challenge to dive in your word. Lord, may, may we take the challenge to be wise. May we take the challenge to invest ourselves in others. Lord, may we love each other well, and may we love others in the name of Jesus. And Lord, may the light that this campus can be shine bright, and uh, we're grateful. 
to be here and for uh, this opportunity. Lord, thanks for your blessings. Be with us in our day, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You are dismissed.